Today is the time for working day because I have a working car for you right here is the brand new Mercedes E Sprinter 320 Furgon. This is the long version full electric Sprinter. What do you think about that guys? And it has free version of batteries. I will tell you in a second 58 kilowatt hour 81 kilowatt hour battery which we have right here and 113 kilowatt hour battery if you need a little bit longer range we will talk about all the those things in a full review video so stay close or check out that video if you want to find out more information of static review and more more data about the car interior exterior reviews and all that stuff now in this video it's all about driving I will drive this new e sprinter or sprinter electric and I will give you the feedback on how it's on the road this is the 2024 version the latest addition to it which allow you to have a bigger battery and more power and to be honest this is the most powerful sprinter ever I think so it has 204 horsepower but at least for the moment is the most powerful even though it's electric it has a 204 horsepower which is pretty cool and I will show you and we will drive on the highway and also in the city a little bit also it's a rear wheel drive for the moment it didn't come with an all-wheel drive system uh, it's only rear wheel so it has an electric motor installed on the rear axle around here uh, also the battery I, I I want to go inside and I want to show you where it's located by the way it comes with 16 inch alloy wheels which is cool ventilated brake discs on the front and brake discs on the rear and if I'm not wrong yeah brake discs on the rear also a lot of gummy here we will see that over the bumps I was surprised to see how good it was anyway parking sensors on the front front camera rear camera here's the charging port by the way also we will talk about that LED lamps low beam high beam LED check this out guys the interior here in the back come also with an optional this woodish interior it's optional and it looks just fantastic I love the way it looks also those LED lights headlamps up here also in the front look phenomenal you have 14 cubic meter around here this is the long version by the way it's standard and long this is the long version uh, which is pretty pretty big and also it looks quite cool the battery is between this B pillar around here and it stop at around this area uh, and then it comes the electric motor and then in the back down there you have the spur tire which I will show you in the review video but anyway guys why I review this car is because I'm thinking to buy this car I want to transform it in a house like a caravan like a travel van and I want to change everything in the back there so that's why I take it on the test because I I'm not thinking only like a working car but I'm thinking more as a house on wheels you know what I mean e printer on the back here you have the new tail lights which look great uh, also you have the step there uh, you have the option also to pull to to add a hook there uh, the, the car come with a lot of options guys uh, which I will explain you in the review video also two mirrors which are super useful one of the mirror from the lower part you have to adjust it manually but the higher one you adjust it electrically from here you can also fold the mirrors from this button I have to put the contact in order to work let me put the contact now it's working and you can fold down the mirrors by the way let me stop the music and from here you can fold in fold out electric windows also you have heated seats optional uh, manual adjustable seats you have only two seats in the front but plenty of space here here is the cables for charging also plenty of storage space inside the car but I will show you more in the review video normal pedals let me go inside guys and let's talk a little bit about the technical data there are so many things to say about this car plenty of storage even up here over this uh, sun visor also you have LED lights up here in this area you have also this glass support you have also here wireless charging and free USB C plus a 12 volt port you have also storage space here storage space there and also storage space down here two cup holders you have even down here 12 volt port and USB C plus 230 volt outlet so you have a socket to charge your laptop for example wherever you want to charge climatic system it's semi-automatic let me start the system press the brake here is the start stop engine button and under the start stop engine button you have this drive mode once you press this drive mode you can switch between three different driving modes so you have comfort echo 
and maximum range. It's really interesting. We will talk about those while we're driving. Climatic system, it's semi-automatic, uh, which I like. And this is the way I use on all cars. I don't like to put the system on uh, auto, even in my car, even if it has. Uh, adjustable steering wheel, it's manually, forward, backward, left and right. Uh, here you have two pedals, min minus and plus. From here, when you are in drive mode, you can see the minus and two plus or one plus or just D. So you can choose to have maximum regenerative brake on D minus, or you can leave less regenerative brake or no regenerative brake and the car will just roll. It's not allowed to go directly to one pedal drive, so it's not working like one pedal drive, but it's still great that you can choose this. Here is the stalk from where you can select the gear, sparking, reverse and drive. Other than that, I love that the steering wheel is in leatherette, it's not real leather, so it's leatherette. Also the seats, textile material. The mirror is the big surprise because usually you can see in the back, right? Where you have those hooks. But check this out, this is optional and you have the mirror in the back and it shows you like a normal SUV. This is great, also great visibility on the mirrors. I have very good position of driving. Also, by the way, they install here, I forget to show you from outside, here is the camera that can read the traffic speed limit uh, signs and also the it helps with uh, all that safety features. I like stay between the lanes. Now, up here you have the sensor still for the wipers. By the way, the wipers are fantastic. Look at the water, how it comes from those wipers. Let me show you. Check this out. The water come from everywhere. Look at this. It's fantastic the way it's it's washing the windshield. I love it. I really like it. Now guys, let me put the seat belt. Let me give you some info about the car and then we will start driving. We'll leave the climatic system a little bit higher for the camera to not stop and I want to give you some technical data. So you have free option of battery as I said before like 58, 81 and 113 kilowatt hour. Depending which one you choose you have different autonomy and different range. So the version that I have with me is the 81 kilowatt hour autonomy and that mean you have up to 324 kilometer range and also in a mix uh, mode can go to 255 but if we look here on the screen let me show you you can see that right now it's showing me that I still have 276 kilometers with 90% battery and minimum what I can do with this uh, percentage for example if I use the climatic system if I use a lot of stuff in the back I can drive up to 155 kilometer but maximum I can go to 284 kilometers if I have uh, probably an empty car and uh, not used to much the climatic system which is great and from my test guys look at the consumption before was like around 26 kilowatt hour uh, which is really really good I will reset this also before we start driving you can see also nice some nice graphics there even though on the right side it shows you the power and when the car recuperate and here on the left side you can see the speed and how much battery you can still you still have down there pretty cool and also down there it says ready ready to drive I will show you also there in the screen in a second 204 horsepower as I said before rear wheel drive this is the e Sprinter 320 furgon long so it's the long version it's for the first time when I drive the long version I drive the short diesel but never electric and never long so it has so many options which you can choose guys like the spare tire 143 euro you can choose a lot a lot of stuff the battery if you want to have this battery you have to pay extra around 8,000 euro is the battery there are so many options so many options definitely go to Mercedes to configure it the way you want it because you can add so many things yeah 8,253 euro is this 81 kilowatt hour battery what it's interesting and I like to point out is that this 81 kilowatt hour battery and the smaller battery 58 kilowatt hour there are LFP battery there are no use of cobalt or mangan in the battery and they are much more safer they have a less density but they are much more safer and they will last longer and in this kind of working vehicles it's very important to have a battery which will last longer in time because you want to make a lot of kilometers you will use a lot 
the car plus the voltage will stay constantly but the 113 kilowatt hour battery have a better density and that battery allow you to drive up to 400 kilometer or up to 523 kilometer in the city which is which is great so but if you drive mostly in the city like your uh, courier and most of the working it's in the city or small distances i would say those 81 kilowatt hour battery it's it's more than enough and it's also better because it will last longer in time the price of the car starting price is 59,704 euro but the price of this car that i have with me it goes up to 80,800 euro with this bigger battery and all the options that I will show you probably in the review video so definitely stay close wheelbase 4 meter and 32 centimeters the front axle weight 1581 kilograms and the rear axle 1553 kilograms it's pretty even that's good the weight of the car total empty like it is right now 3134 kilograms it's pretty heavy car but it's just fine I think I give you almost all the information guys I hope I didn't forget something but I try to give you as we go on the road by the way here we have a button where we can activate the camera in the back also you can press like this and you can see the front and the back camera the sad thing is that we don't have the 360 degrees camera but you can get optional also camera on the mirrors so you can see a nice view uh, that would be super helpful for such a big car like that you have this armrest here as well let me reset the consumption from start press to reset okay great uh, reset it go to home go to info and now you can see also the energy flow here what happened with energy in real time you can see also the position of the car and so on and let's drive first of all in maximum range and here is the stock put it in drive and let's drive it also i will start driving in uh, d minus and i drive the car before and i noticed that d minus for me it's it's the it's really nice i get used I, I i mean i have an electric car and now d minus it's so useful in the city at low speeds and i think for those kind of big vehicles wagons like this one i think it's great when you release the acceleration the car to regenerate brake and not use the physical brakes also you regenerate the the brake but also you can control a little bit better the the weight of the car because the car as you probably know it's pretty heavy right and sometimes if you leave it to roll and you press the brake sometimes it, all that weight will come in the front at once and all that weight will be stopped a little bit too too fast and if you use regenerative brake will be a little bit more even and you can control a little bit better the vehicle so what i find uh, better for for these kind of vehicles is to use the maximum regenerative brake for for a better control not a better efficiency but a better control I will go also out on the highway so first of all we drive a little bit on the highway then we'll go a little bit on the city uh, I don't even need to tell you that the car is basically uh, the same chassis as the combustion engine car so the same size perfect visibility outside perfect visibility in the mirrors uh, good comfort what I was surprised to see and we have this bigger battery right here we have the 81 kilowatt hour battery and I was surprised to see that the the car the suspensions are pretty good and there are new suspensions on the rear on the front are the same suspension on, as on the normal combustion engine ah you can deactivate also the speed limit from there super simple like that uh, also if you if you accelerate right now you can see it right now we are in efficient mode and it's it gives you the power so so smoothly but immediately if you change to comfort and you press the acceleration look at this you have instant instant much power it's much more bigger difference between uh, one and other perfect visibility I love the suspension man I don't know what what is the reason but the suspension seems to be really good and usually you have electric car they are heavier right this one it's a big wagon it's heavy usually but I was surprised on how good are the suspension right now driving at 110 km per hour and you start to hear it's normal some wind from outside but the car seems to stay pretty good on the road even though it's quite long quite big car 
uh, I like it it comes also with cruise control you can get also adaptive cruise control I don't remember exactly the name how Mercedes uh, they call it uh, it's something with um, uh, I don't remember but it's adaptive cruise control so the car is able to uh, accelerate brake keep the distance between the car in front stay between the lanes uh, but this car doesn't have it has only optional this cruise control so I can set the cruise control and the car will keep the speed but but all the cars come standard with emergency brake it has a radar in the front and lane keeping assist so it'll keep you between the lanes so uh, right now we are on the highway so I see 110 km per hour it stays pretty good and it's doing a great job uh, and also I feel like it has more power so if I press the acceleration even at those kind of speed it still give you the power something to to point out is the fact that the car it's limited to 120 km per hour so you cannot exceed 120 km per hour and I think it's a great idea because over 120 km per hour because of the weight of the car because of the things that you will have in the back uh, will be a little bit dangerous and also inefficient for an electric car so that's that's pretty good uh, otherwise i tell you i really like the way it's running much more smoother i remember when i drive the diesel version that you hear that engine and you cannot hear other things in the car or in the back of the car but now because it's electric and it's super smooth it's like you're hearing everything like everything every single uh, piece element material you hear it uh, the mirror up here it's gorgeous I tell you it's really really gorgeous it's so such a big help because you can see in the back what happened plus you can turn the mirror to you like a screen you don't have to keep it straight like a mirror you turn it to you and you have such a nice view there um, I like it and right now you can see I released the acceleration pedal and the car it's regenerated the brake back into the battery and it's really powerful right now I use the D minus which is the maximum regenerative brake which is really really what I will use on this car because I feel like I have better control I don't know if that makes sense I feel more safer if I use it like that if I go in D plus or plus plus right now accelerate release and look at this the car is just rolling so I have to use the physical brake, not physical, but first of all, it will regenerate, but then physical brake. But still, I feel like it's a loose, the car is loose, so I, I feel like I don't have too much control. Um, but yeah, this is just me. I don't know, guys, if you feel the same, write me in the comment, tell me what you think about that. I'm really curious to, to find out. Otherwise, I noticed that um, the car have auto hold, but I didn't find that button. So. I'm not sure if it's in a settings or this car doesn't have that function but I didn't find auto hold button so when I press the brake it doesn't want to stay with auto hold I'm not sure where is it uh, I look a little bit but I didn't find it so yeah if some of you are there and know about auto hold it just tell me where it is here is the electronic handbrake the lights control and uh, fog lamps and so on but I didn't find the even in the menu now here it's a nice graphic that shows you what happened with energy in real time you can see we have 87 percent battery and you can see the rear motor or the battery and you can see when the car is using the battery when the car is recuperate the energy uh the climatic system is still working on level 2 19 degrees so we can see what kind of consumption we can get in the end and i'm still driving in comfort mode i feel like also in those kind of in the roundabouts it's feel pretty agile I like the steering wheel that's pretty light I like that in comfort mode it's pretty responsive the car so uh, it feels pretty quick now if we switch that to eco mode for example the car will definitely become much more smoother you can see right now I press the acceleration and it gives me the power much more uh, smoother so you can see now I floor it and the power it's so smooth now you you have on the pedal two levels so you floor it and at some point it's locked you feel like it don't go anymore but if you press it a little bit harder you will have another one centimeter place to go and that mean when you need maximum power so let me show you for example if you go to maximum range usually on maximum range if you floor it look at it right now I floor it right now the acceleration pedal it's all the way down but I feel like it's go so slow and if I 
press that centimeter now the car is kind of switching to comfort mode so you can overcome that that uh, echo or uh, extended range mode so you can switch to comfort by pressing the pedal a little bit harder if that makes sense for you i hope you understand what i mean i saw that also in other cars so it's not the only car that use that this is very smart because most of the time you want to maximize the range but sometimes when you want to go faster in some place or you want to cross pass you don't want to change the driving mode you just press the acceleration a little bit harder so i find it very very useful very interesting um yeah of course the shape of the car even though they try to make it more aerodynamic it's still a big car it's still um you still hear a little bit of noise from outside but yeah you can see right driving 120 it feels pretty stable it feels pretty good i think if you hear music you won't hear anything from outside you can also still cross pass other cars so it's it feels pretty powerful it feels more than than enough visibility it's gorgeous i like the steering wheel that's it's set up more to the comfort side but even though the steering wheel is set up to comfort side i'm surprised how good stability you have on the highway and it it, it feels quite stable i like it yeah pretty nice Now we will go out a little bit in the city as well, try to drive in the city. And right now the car is just doing the job itself. I just release the acceleration pedal and the car will just recuperate the energy back into the battery and I feel like I have more control over it when I release the acceleration. I know what to expect, you know, it's not feeling so loosey, great, of course here if you go to vehicle it gives you some other information like the position of the car and uh, the acceleration, the brakes, when the car used the brakes and so on, so that, that's also quite nice, quite great information, it's a 10.2 inch screen right there, and of course we don't have i don't have optional the navigation system but you can get the navigation system as an option install it on it and it's a fantastic navigation you probably know it from mercedes they use it also on other mercedes cars even though it's not the latest this one this, this is the m box it's not the latest this one um that guy didn't see the the crosswalk because before here on the on the ground was those lines and now there are no more lines and if you not pay attention to the signs you just pass and don't wait for other people to pass but i knew it's there and i saw the sign so you have to always pay attention to the people that are around there and what they want to do always pay attention to the surroundings that's really important anyway we go in the city now um i drive the car I think for two hours today before I start this video and I made a lot of roundabouts a lot of small streets like that this is the long version and it's definitely something to pay attention to the car and to the size of the car when you're driving in the city or in small areas because uh, yeah it's it's quite a big long car it, it's been like two three four I think more than five years when I drive last time the the, the diesel sprinter so yeah it's been a while i need a little bit of time to get used with the size of the car but once you get used and pay attention to the mirrors to the surroundings i think um, you will be just fine how much we have consumption we have like 32 kilowatt hour consumption until now because we go on the highway so the consumption it's quite uh high for in comparison with the normal um uh, with a normal car hi the magic you let's go let's go guys i let you pass because nobody let you pass 
and now I go all right but you can see right now we drive 30 40 km per hour it's so smooth it's so pleasant I really love I really like that smoothness I think it's a it's a fantastic option uh, if you have a company and if you have the possibility to charge those vans um, I think it's it's fantastic to have one of those and the maintenance it's much more cheaper in time if you have the LFP battery it will last longer so we have like three times the life cycles of the normal lithium battery plus if you have the possibility to charge cheaper or for free if you have solar panels or something like that I think it's amazing to get for your company uh, this uh, electric sprinter you saw that big uh, big uh, bumps and also you can see right now the speed bump right here you can see that I was surprised how soft the suspension feel with those heavy stuff I'm, I'm really surprised I was expect to be much more stiffer that's for sure but the comfort is here it's quite nice I like it I really like the car Man, I think I can get used with it. I was thinking, and I'm still thinking. I'm still on the on the thinking process of buying this e-sprinter to transform it in a in a caravan. You know, in a travel van. It comes also with blind spot technology and all that safety features so yeah you're good to go like the newest is cars but you still have to pay extra attention as in comparison with a normal car the only thing that I didn't have time to check it's if they will be able to install all that water tank and all that parts for a travel van in this electric car because you don't have the floor anymore you, do, you are not able to go through the floor in the middle at least so yeah before they put some tank water tank and so on so stuff there but right now uh, these people have to learn how to drive in those roundabouts yeah you see it's easy to drive in the city and I like the steering it's steering wheel it's so so soft you know what I like the most on these kind of vans is that people with other cars really respect you and they are really they are a little bit scared to go in front of you or if you turn the signal they will let you they will keep the distance this is fantastic I think this is the way they should keep the distance and respect each other even with uh, yeah normal cars commercial cars we have 31 kilowatt hour now in the city the consumption is going lower uh, because usually when you drive electric cars man that's a big problem here usually when you have electric cars in the city they tend to consume less energy and that's that's great because most of the uh, people that work with those kind of cars they don't drive too much on the highway most of the time they are around the city and they don't drive too fast and that's why I think uh, they can be super efficient now the, the only 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 thought that I have it's which kind of which kind of uh, battery to, to get and I'm between the 81 kilowatt hour or the 113 kilowatt hour that's the biggest question which arrive in my head because you know I need range when you have a travel van you need to travel a lot but on the other side the LFP battery 81 kilowatt hour it's LFP it lasts longer it's safer so it's also cheaper to change so yeah that, that's that's the biggest biggest question and I didn't have time to check in the configurator if some of you check in the configurator already and know the price for the 113 kilowatt hour write me in the comment 
so yeah and those down mirrors are so useful you can see the corners of the van so easy that's super super useful anyway 30 kilowatt hour so it goes down in the city as i said man in the city the consumption is it's going definitely lower i like it i really like the car yeah let me turn on the a little bit i need a little bit more vans because i'm i'm afraid that I'm afraid that the camera will stop, so I will leave the vans only here. Oh, and by the way, you see, you have those super nice vans from Mercedes. Those, when I saw this first time, I was like, oh my God, this is really cool. That was one piece, unique piece that I love about Mercedes, and they are so smooth and nice when you touch it. Really like it. And you can see in the back, what happened in the back there, but you have also this button to see the rear camera and you can see in the rear from above or you can see from uh, a little bit wider so you can see what happened in the back so 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 useful now I get the car with 99% and I have still 84% battery and I still the car still say that I can drive 258 kilometers and I think I drive until now around 50 or more kilometers I will check I will try to calculate a little bit later when we will stop because I'm really curious yeah 42 kilometers I drive like really interesting really interesting um, yeah 30 kilowatt hour we will see and we can calculate in the end uh, what kind of uh, you saw that from here you can look unlock and look like like a classic and I like the fact that here you have this leather man it's, it feels really soft and nice uh, we can calculate in the end but uh, with this 81 kilowatt hour battery I think you can reach around 200 kilometers I think this is the will be the average average uh, range which you can get 200 kilometer and I think you can get around 300 almost 300 kilometer with a bigger battery no I definitely I think you can get 300 and that's in normal condition with climatic system with uh, weight in the in the back and so on but if you drive like super low light condition you can you can reach without any problem even with this one i think you can reach 250 without any problem so yeah on electric car as you probably know guys depend a lot on the condition weather condition uh, weight condition you use climatic system how fast you're driving so it's always depending but but uh, from my calculation and from what I saw with this car after I sit and I drive it I would say you can you can reach I think the average consumption will be around 200 the average range will be around 200 kilometers but the lowest is range if you have a lot of weight in the back and you drive faster on the highway you can expect around 150 but if you drive in lighter in the back probably like a travel van where the light where the weight is so a little bit uh, to the higher end or I mean on this long version because the short version should have uh, less consumption because uh, it's smaller and the light it's it's uh, smaller so you can get a better consumption but I mean man I mean on this uh, on this version so as a travel van with this long version yeah with all that weight you can calculate um, on this 81 kilowatt hour probably 200 kilometers yeah that would be the range if you don't drive too fast drive in the speed limit and a little bit slower then you can get 200 kilometers yeah that why that why I will go with probably the um, bigger battery 113 kilowatt hour battery because you have that 400 range and in the city 500 so in real life maybe you get 350 kilometer and that will be just the perfect spot the same as on my tesla model y standard range 350 300 300 kilometers then it's fine because you have a lot of charging station in this range and you can travel also long distances so yeah 
I guess I guess I will get a longer battery yeah even though it's lithium battery if you want to do if you want to transform the car in a travel van definitely I would get the longer bigger battery and if you have a business where you drive a lot on the highway and longer distances definitely go with bigger battery um, yeah otherwise the car it's it's pretty good you will you will definitely love it so I drive I told you I drive the diesel before and it's definitely a much bigger improvement and when you go to work of course you have to charge it and you can charge the car at fastest speed in around 28 minutes I think 10 to 80 percent but yeah probably one hour it will get one hour to almost fully charge it maybe to zero to 90 percent but um, you have the advantage that much more easier to drive and much more cheaper much more efficient but the disadvantage is that you have to charge it but if you don't drive daily more than 200 kilometers I think 81 kilowatt hour or the 113 kilowatt hour doesn't matter which one you get will be fine so up to 200 kilometer daily so now depending how many kilometers you do daily because I think it's much more convenient or even if you drive more if you ha if you start in the morning like I know uh, like a couriers they start in the morning like five o'clock four or five o'clock and then you you take a break at 12 o'clock and charge the car for one hour and then you can go uh, for the second round a little bit later then we'll be just fine you see the blind spot technology in the corner there so I have to take the corners a little bit longer with uh, this car right now we are in maximum range let's go back to comfort yeah by the way if you go back to comfort you immediately feel how the acceleration become much more responsive you can cross past the car super fast but if you switch back I think the eco mode is the sweet spot I think it's perfect to combine some power with efficiency and right now I don't even use the brakes I just release the acceleration pedal the car re regenerate the brake back into the battery and right now I use the pedal it's not one pedal drive but it's acting almost like a one pedal drive and I feel I feel like this is the way I like to use these big heavy vans in this mode probably if I get the car for for a travel van I will get the, the, the standard version not the long version it's also much more easier to park in certain areas and also it's lighter to drive it's lighter the car the range will be better the weight will be better so yeah <clears throat> that's it but I really like the space in this one it's so nice it's so big so nice and even now you want to cross pass you just press acceleration and then press it a little bit harder and it gives you that extra edge edgy power now most of the trip that we drive in this test drive out it was on the highway at kind of high speeds for this van but I think most most of the companies and people that will drive this car will drive it exactly as, as I drive it right now a little bit in the city a little bit on the highway so that's I think it's a it's a good test the temperature outside it's like around 28 20 28 I think degrees or something like that 27 I don't know if it shows me around here yeah, yeah, yeah exactly 27.5 28 degrees so it's it's good conditions for electric cars even though you have the option to precondition the battery you have the option to control the battery in the car from the mobile phone so you can connect it to the mobile phone to schedule uh, 
uh, some charging and schedule to precondition the battery and so on so we have a lot a lot of options I will try to cover those things a little bit better in my uh, full review video I have to go right here and I have to take those curves a little bit longer otherwise yes good otherwise I don't want to hit that wheels now again over those speed bumps oh there are a lot of vans around there so I have to park it somewhere here to end up the video so going in reverse it's so easy you go up like a normal Mercedes and it's so useful man you have to get those cameras I think even a 360 degrees camera will be so useful there are small but you can make it bigger like that so that's much more useful but you don't see the lines if you want to see the lanes you do it like that so you can park it on two spots I would say because the car is pretty long so the other cars can park as well so they definitely made those places here special in order to park those kind of long cars like trucks and stuff like that let me put it in park the climatic system a little bit lower this is the consumption 30 kilowatt hour was the consumption on this trip electronic handbrake is here by the way changing between the information you can do it from here from reset 29 a little bit earlier when i drive more in the city i had a better consumption and it says you can still drive with 83 percent battery 20 254 kilometer if you drive like we drive until now so it's not bad it's not bad definitely not bad because we drive too fast we have this 30 but i had a little bit earlier i had around 25 26 kilowatt hour and driving also uh yeah not so fast i didn't drive 120 but that was the video guys i don't know if i cover everything if i miss something ask me down below i will answer with pleasure thank you very much to all of you that watching my videos really appreciate that don't forget to like share subscribe that will mean a lot for me that will help me a lot check out the other video the full review video i'll have a separate video where i will show you the interior exterior uh, we talk about everything space technical data and i will try to to cover a little bit more about this new mercedes e sprinter so that was the video thank you for watching stay safe guys and as always see you in the next one bye